Welcome, you are listening to The Travel Wins, hosted by Pete Kotzbach. This is a weekly interview show about people who travel for work and all the ups and downs that go along with it. Here we go. Hey, welcome to The Travel Wins Podcast. Today, my guest is Krista Pennick, the founder, producer of Reggae at the Sea event coming up at the end of September. I'll let her tell you all the fun details, but there's some great, great, I want to say local bands uh, to Los Angeles and uh, pretty excited to see and talk to somebody that's setting up an event that's going to be out on the sea. So how are you today, Krista? Hi, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. You know, I was approached, I'm like, okay, you're not traveling for work. But boy, you're really expecting a lot of people. I mean, that's one of the aspects of setting up a company is working around people's schedules, right? especially right. bands that are touring and, and everything else. How, how did Reggae at the Sea come about? Oh, man, that's a loaded question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I during the pandemic, um, prior to the pandemic, I was a burlesque dancer. Um, during the pandemic, I became a tra- travel agent. For um, while I was kind of doing downtime, um, while also having a nine to five job that I was working from home. Um, so I had this really great idea. And when we talk about travel, well, why couldn't I do like a, a burlesque cruise down to Ensenada and have it be kind of a, you know, big show on the water and we're going yeah. on a cruise and we're doing all of that. And that was something I was actually looking at. And I was I was talking to the different suppliers that I worked with, Carnival Cruise, Celebrity Cruise, doing all of that. And then I kind of just said, you know, I need to wait. Pandemic's happening. No one's going to get on a cruise right now, right? Yeah. So um, decided not to do that. Um, but all of these years, you know, but from the time I was a teen till now, reggae has been a huge passion. Music is my passion. Um and it just made sense once the pandemic was over and everything opened up that, hey, why couldn't I do something cool within my reggae music community? Yeah. Uh, bring people back together, but also be so incredibly exciting and fun and different. And um, and then eventually take it to Ensenada or Mexico at some point, but start here locally where I'm from. Sure. Yeah. So, so it's not the- that Reggae at the Sea is going to be just a, a, a one-night event versus, you know, going down to Ensenada is going to be a three-day, two-night or whatever. One-night event, four hours on the water, Marina Del Rey. Uh, we leave uh, right out of the marina at five o'clock. We're back at nine, and then we're doing a huge after party right down the street in Venice um, at the Clutch Roadhouse. And so it's going to be a big outdoor event, uh, DJ playing, a whole bunch of vendors, um, a special menu, cocktails. We're doing a big movie screen with a big lounge outside with chairs and just a really cool vibe. Um, cannabis, event, like just everybody, everybody's going to come out to the after party. So big event for one night. Um, yeah. The plan is to do that again in March and then again in September and then take it down to San Diego where I can have 1,200 people on the vote versus 500 at this first event. But 500 so. for our first events, a big it's number. Huge. Yeah, that's a big number. I mean, I'm used to yeah. to filling 200, you know, person capacity venue building for my burlesque shows. That's where I started producing. And now I'm taking it to a much bigger event. It, it's scary. Uh, <laughs> no pressure. Really yeah, no pressure. It's all me. You know, yeah. it's, it's my company. So, you know, I'm, I'm putting up all the money. I decided, you know what, I'm going to try it. Um you know, I'm, you know, 49, I'm getting ready to retire here soon is what I'm thinking, right? I want to retire soon. Um, so why not do something that I'm passionate about and see what that, mm-hmm. you know, that does for me. So. 49 was a, I remember 49. <laughs> <laughs> not long ago, right? Not long ago. A couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I went, I went skydiving on my 50th. So my daughter took me skydiving. Yeah. You're insane. I can't do that. My son just did it. I, I, Good for you. I, I, I told I wouldn't do it again, but I'm glad I did it. Why wouldn't you do it again? Uh, I, I tend to get my motion sickness, oh, and yeah. so I was fine when we were going down, but then uh, we were pro- a third halfway down, and he goes, "Hey, I got to make some turns." Like, "Are you okay with that?" I said, "Yeah," and he started spinning, and I was like, "I didn't know he was going to go that fast." So all of a sudden, I was like, "Oh, whoa!" You know, I, I got a little, yeah. a little dizzy up there. So 
if, if I was just dropping straight down, I'd be fine. Right. And you had fun while you were, while you were doing that. That yeah. was fine. Yeah. But yeah, you were fine doing that. Yeah. Yeah. The, the idea yeah. of jumping out of play. Nah, I'm glad I did it. Pretty yeah. stupid. Yeah. But I'll, I'll find something else stupid to do. <laughs> yeah. Because 50 won't happen again. I figure I'm a little past halfway now. So. Yeah, it's it's a weird it's a weird age. Forty nine is a weird one because it's like, hey, I'm right, I'm I'm right there, and what are we doing? Let's yeah. let's do something fun. <laughs> I felt like thirty five to fifty was like, poop, what happened? Yeah, it's fast. Yeah, it really. And I and I think you and I talked. Um, we're both grandparents, right? So yeah. I just became grandparents. So that's also a new twist to my story. Um, a good twist. Exciting. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So what what bands are going to be at this inaugural event of, of your reggae at sea? So um, for me, and and it really became like, you know, uh, what would I, what would be the, the cool show that I would want to go to? Because I spend my time also traveling for tons of festivals, reggae festivals, all of that. Who would I pay the money to go see? Who could I bring to Southern California or who are already here and have, yeah. you know, created this following and, and it's just this great thing and they all kind of jive together. Um, <clears throat> I was like, okay, so I want to bring in artists who may not have a huge following yet. I want to help bring up artists who should be in the spotlight. I want to bring people who've been around for a long time. And then I also want to bring in a, a huge headliner that they all kind of like mesh together. Their, their sound is similar. Yeah. They're still in the reggae scene. They're, you know, they've got, you know, a ton of people that that love their music. So I started with um, a local band out of Long Beach called Lake Dub. And it's a group of five, uh, five guys who are just incredibly talented. Um, they've become my friends over the years. Um, all of these bands um, are people that I really look up to and, and are, are family friends. You know, they're, they're part of the music community. Um, so they're going to open the show. Nice. Um, then tomorrow's bad seeds. I mean, I've I've literally traveled the world to see these guys. They are really great people and 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 so talented also. And they bring a different kind of vibe to the reggae scene as well. Um, Lake Dub, tomorrow's bad seeds, local bad yeah. seeds are from South Bay. And then I was like, well, you know, who else can I get from this area who would really compliment that and really head it off? And so Long Beach Dub All Stars. Um, is the headliner and those are some of the guys from sublime and after yeah. sublime you know uh disbanded then we had the all-stars come in and and so opie's the lead singer uh it's just a really great vibe to bring to this to kind of wrap the whole night up um and then i have two acoustic sets too so we've got miss yeah. b royal i wanted to bring some female energy into the into the vibe and then we have um VTA coming in and doing an acoustic set. So, and then a DJ playing in between all of it. So it's going to be great. That's, I mean, that's, that's a really good lineup. I know. A, a first event. Yeah. Because when it, I saw it, it, was, it was I was like, too. that's Long Beach Double All-Star. Okay. Tomorrow, Betsy, I, I told you, I just wanted to go see the nearest plane down here and I, I was out of town, so I couldn't go, but. Yeah, at St. Rock, right? Is where yeah. you, yeah, that was a great show. Yeah, they're. They're playing a lot. Um, they're doing big things, and you know, I, I want to support the scene as much as I can. Yeah, uh, with all of these bands who I really love. You know, I love them on a on a love of music level, and I love them as people, and I want to see them do well. So it's really cool to have them on. What well, one of the things I wanted to ask was because I, I always try and put like with the, my business guests, I go, well, how would I have done that, or you know what I mean? Right. The, I think the difficulties would have. I mean, how far out? Did you have to plan this and let the bands know, hey, I, I'm going to need you for four hours on this. I don't know if it's a Friday or a Saturday, but, you know, don't don't go do another event. I, I need right. So so that's the tricky spot, uh, spot yeah. for me. Um, I hadn't done this before. So, you know, it's like, OK, hey, I know these are who I want. I knew I could talk to a couple of the bands and just have a one on one conversation without going through a bigger, you know, yeah. uh, an agency or whatever you know a bigger booking agent um but for long beach Dub all stars you know i had to i had to call up you know a bigger agency and be like hey you know i, I want to book this band and how does that work and knowing that you know summer is a big touring season and yeah. 
So I, I wasn't, so I started this whole, you know, business opportunity and doing all the things in January of this year. Um, by March is when I started really going, okay, I've got to start reaching out. Who are these people's booking agents? Like I've got to start doing that. Yeah. It's really a learning process, like just going along and, and reaching out and sending emails. And I finally got to the right agent within this company to start talking about Long Beach Dub All-Stars. And they're like, yeah, here's, you know, here's an offer form. Fill it out, let us know. And I was just like, oh my gosh, what's an, what's an offer form? Yeah, so yeah. I, I'm doing the best I can and filling it out with what I think I know. And it's going to be this much and on this date. And here's my offer. And, you know, and, oh, and, and by the way, what would they, you know, what would they want? What do, you know, what are the normal offers that they get? And they kind of gave me an idea. And I was like, oh yeah, no. Um, <laughs> I, I, off the table. So she said, you know, hey, give us your best offer and I have to put it in front of the band. I was like, all right. So I, you did. I called in and I did it. And yeah. um, it took about two weeks to hear back and they were on because they had just, I, I learned this later from their tour manager um, that they had just talked about, hey, wouldn't it be cool to be on a cruise? And then my offer came in. Uh, and it's not the three day or big cruise, but it was yeah. still be on a boat and do that thing. So, um, so anyway, to your point, like timing is everything, like getting that, you know, getting in there at that sweet spot before summer tour, talking to people because, you know, you have to probably book that six or seven months in advance to yeah. get in that summer tour. And this is right at the end of summer. So I found just this perfect date to get in there and, and make it happen. Because you're not getting into the winter stuff yet either. So it's good. Right. Yeah. The fall tours start like right. Yeah. Right, right after. after. Yeah. So it's, it's just, um, it's been interesting and been learning experience, but, um, I actually got what I, what I needed to get and I got my date and it's been, it's been great. Well, that's why I tell people, you know, a, a lot about my show and then just kind of life in general is timing. Like, Always. cause I, I get, how did you get this person or this person? I go, I don't know. I reached out. They had time. They weren't traveling. They weren't, they were, they were, they were at home and it worked out. Yeah. yeah. So. It does, it does work out if it's meant, I mean, you know, there's that whole thing like, if it's meant to be, it'll be. No, it's, it really is. I felt like everything aligned. Yeah. Um, people were excited, you know, people are still excited. Um, this kind of event in this area hasn't happened before on the west coast, it happens a lot on the east coast, yeah, and down um, in Florida, and yeah, down in Florida, yeah, leaving uh, like Jam Rock, those big, big, you know, three day events that happen and go down to uh, Jamaica and, and back or wherever it is. Um, and that's what I want to do, but I'm doing it on the West coast. I'm, I'm kind of just spearheading this whole idea and I'm starting, you know, local. Yeah. But believe me, I am taking it as a travel agent who has those connections to the big cruise ships and the ability to, you know, book rooms and blocks of rooms and stages and mm -hmm. all of that. Um, it's coming, it's coming and it, it's exciting. Well, I'm excited for you. Actually, it's kind of that's, that's very cool. I, I because I'm a huge reggae fan. You know, when oh, I, when, when when I interviewed Maxi Priest, we were talking about my first. I bought two records, like actual albums, with my own money. In the first, it was Van Halen two, and and Bob Marley's Rossmann Vibration. And my dad's like, "Why are you buying that?" I said, "I don't know." I the Legend wasn't out, and I was like, "All right, let me just. I want to get that." And he goes, "Okay, it's your money." <laughs> and, and then Maxie started singing one of the songs from that album on my show. I was like, oh. oh, he did. Yeah, I was like, oh. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, that's shoot, 37 years ago that I bought that album. So, but, yeah, music, music is a huge part of, you know, yeah. every, if you're a music head, an audiophile, it's you, you a point in time in your life and you can exactly remember the music you were listening oh, yeah. to you hear that song and it brings you right back and all the emotions that come with it and i you know i'm, I'm kind of that <laughs> that. right it's true yeah nice. um but more often than not music saves our lives right so it's yeah. you know at one point for me it was punk rock saved my life it's always been reggae saved my life it's always that so but it, it's it's interesting because i i was just thinking when you're saying about there really are a lot of uh, reggae, even all, kind of alternative reggae groups from this area in San Diego and then Santa Barbara all the way down. So, 
it's kind of cool that you're taking local bands you know it's a new genre now right it's yeah. it's not um it's not necessarily roots like we're talking bob marley and peter tosh and 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 yeah. those you know max Secret, like all of that right we're we're now into this more americanized version of reggae but you know the roots reggae the roots rock reggae that is at the the core of all of these bands that have come you know out of california so it's yeah. also california reggae it's referred to a lot um but yeah i mean you know some of the biggest festivals that i go to um i go to one every year in december down in cancun um it's at the hard rock resort down there and slightly stupid from ob they yeah. It's their event. It's closer to the sun. And I've gone for three years. I'm going back again in December. It's just this annual thing that I do. And it's because these bands are now the core yeah. of California reggae and they're taking it across, you know, across the world. And it's it's pretty epic to watch. You know, they're selling out stadiums, they're selling, you know what I mean? It's selling out. It's great. Yeah. And they're uh, and they're very current. I mean, that that's one thing I like about reggae music. You can listen to reggae music from different eras and and like it just doesn't it doesn't there's it doesn't seem to be kind of as trendy it's as, not. as pop music whatever it's like, forever right like yeah. i mean i you know you like you mentioned bob marley like i've listened to bob marley since i was 11 years old yeah you know um and still a big part of my culture the the my whole music vibe stems from him you know what would be your 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 dream line? what would be your dream lineup <laughs> oh man like for one of your life. events or current just current artists oh, they have now. to be alive so yeah yeah <laughs> no <Peter Tosh>. um, <laughs> uh, yeah i mean yeah i'm sad i never got to see any of that um see a dream lineup so um i am a huge fan of the band pepper yeah. and Conan from hawaii um, that would be an epic, you know, headliner for me. I'm a huge fan of the Elevators. The Elevators are a, a newer band within the last, you know, five years really have come up um, into the scene. Stick Figure, that would also be a perfect headliner. So I would, I would say Pepper, Stick Figure, Elevators, and then this cool new band. It's a duo. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call them reggae. Um, they're more of like the hip hop genre, okay. um, but they, they've gotten into the reggae scene and all of us just adore them so much. They're called Little Stranger and they're from the East Coast um, and it's just a duo, two, two guys, and they are just amazing. And so having those three uh, bands would be amazing on the bill or four, actually, because I, I said Pepper, figure a uh, little stranger and gosh um i was gonna say catastro but that can't happen um man just there's so i mean there's so many well, I, 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 I was curious like if you're gonna say like julian marley or like, <laughs> i love julian marley just Jenny and the marley brothers yeah no i i mean all like that's what i mean it for me it's like i i listen every day to just reggae nonstop while i'm working and every single you know band that comes on i'm just equally excited to hear fortunate youth would be amazing to have yeah um there's another band coming up as well called fayuka that i just got turned on to that band uh they're from phoenix they are not a socal reggae band but they are so amazing um there's just so much to choose from I know. You know, and, and, and there's so much gosh there's so much and i'm learning new stuff all the time new music all the time well, I thought I, I had uh, Stephen Coor, Cat Coor from Third World on the show. Yeah. yeah. And they've been, they're 50 years of touring right now. Mm. He's one of the original, I'm like, 50 years? I'm like, wow, still going. What's that? For 50 years. <laughs> yeah. 50 years of one band. Yeah. That's the Rolling Stones of reggae, I guess. Yep. But you know, the, the, the original Wheelers are still out there. They're still, they're yeah. still touring. I just saw Jamie and Marley um, last year um, out at Dry Diggins Festival that's actually happening this weekend. Um, Julian Marley, it wasn't St. Rock, I, I misspoke. It was at the Venice West in yeah. Venice. Um, that was a few months ago. He is an epic performer. Um, he had the whole place just wow. on there. It was, it was, it was a vibe. Yeah. Um, 
and and I think and I take little bits of each show that I go to. Like I'm watching people and I'm I'm seeing what really makes everybody stoked on where they are and and why they're there and all of that. And that's kind of what I'm hoping to bring to Reggae at Sea, right? Like I want to I want people to feel like they're having a very intimate experience um, with these bands that they love. And then they take away from that and they talk about it and they, it's a memory that they have forever because they've never been on a triple decker yacht. Yeah. This beautiful yacht, a hundred foot yacht, triple decker outdoor, up de- you know, it's a, a lounge outside, like all of this thing. And then also watching the music. So you're getting this experience, this really luxury, cool experience. And you're listening to reggae, which you, yeah. I mean, at a sunset cruise, that whole, that whole scene is just going to be. It sh- yeah. And how, how, how concerned are you about weather? You know, it, it does. It, I mean, it's a problem, right? <laughs> we so, just had a hurricane, so. Yeah, some, right. But, tropical storm. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, it was a tropical storm. Yeah. So, you know, there is always going to be this thing where, hey, the, the captain could say, if it's too windy, we can't yeah. take off from the dock, but we'll stay docked. Well, you're still going to have this epic experience because even in the dock, the marina is beautiful. You're still going to have a sunset. You're going to do all those things, but. And it really uh, is. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's gorgeous there. So yeah. there's there's no bad views, no nothing. So I'm not I'm not very nervous about it. But yeah, I definitely want to get. So we we got to go as clients. I got to go on the cruise, the same boat that I'm going out on. Um, there's there was a party. They had us all on this big you know party, and it actually took us out of the jetty, and we hung out for a while, and then we came back. And to have that experience, I can honestly say now I know what it's going to feel like once we get out past the jetty yeah. and we're actually in the sunset and we're seeing everything. It's going to be it's going to be amazing. I've been on that on that cruise ship before at sunset, and, and just so you, any listeners that are like, "Well, I get seasick," you're not going really past the breakwater. I mean, it doesn't get bumpy. No, I, I get I get motion sickness, yeah. and I was fine. I mean, it was going so slow and smooth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's so, you're definitely not. You, well, you shouldn't get seasick. That's that's the goal. Yeah, and I and I'm hoping that that isn't a deterrent for people because. I definitely do, and I didn't. So, so, so here, here's my other question. I was going to ask you because I, I heard a lot about it when I was in Dallas this week. What happens if they enact the COVID restrictions again? Dead in the water. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it um, it would have to be a refunded event, unfortunately, and and I I would hope that doesn't happen, and um. It's weird that you say that because this week, all of a sudden I started seeing people, a lot of people around like out and about when I'm going to the stores and stuff, people are starting to wear masks again. And I'm like, yeah. what is really going on? Um, but yeah, if, I mean, if they, if they did likely um, the cruise ships would get, you know, closed down, down again. Yeah. It's too, too close quarters. So um, that would be a tragedy because that yeah. was my first event <laughs> and I'd have to, to refund everybody so let's hope not i got my fingers crossed for you (laughs) i was literally thinking about that because they were people were asking because we're so special here in california Mm -hmm. that when i was in dallas they're like hey so you guys gonna shut down and i'm like because there are some companies that are already enacting covid restrictions again lionsgate studios just said that if you go to the studio you have to wear a mask and you have to get self-tested again I'm like, they, the government's not even mandating it. And these companies are randomly making these decisions to affect their business. I was like, yeah. wow. It's really, it, I mean, like I said, I, 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 I've I, been noticing people wearing masks again. And it was yeah. just this, I was in like three different places in three different, you know, counties. I was in Orange County, LA County, Riverside County. And I was noticing people wearing masks. I'm like, what is going on? I'm like, is there some underground like notification system that's happening that i am not aware of because if you know if that were to happen it'd be really sad go, go uh, to when you go to denver or texas no mask anywhere it's just here it's just california yeah they can't do that i mean i would hope i they mean they can't can. <laughs> that's I the first time i'm like oh, yeah. can't. my wife's like they're gonna die. Like, they can't do that oh they did it i know they did it yeah when they shut down the beaches, I'm like, oh, yeah. I can't do that. 
Oh, they did it. Oh, they did it. And we were it's outside, but they did it. Yeah. No gathering. Oh, they so. can they can't close down the parks. Oh, they did. <laughs> they gave out tickets to, to moms that were at the parks here. It was such a weird time. I hope that doesn't happen again. God. Here, I'm gonna cross my fingers again for that one. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Because I'm with you on that. <laughs> I really don't. You know, yeah. How, uh, not, you're not there. You're you're getting close to the finish line. Yes. How many of these a year would you like to do based on how much how much work it is? Yeah, I mean it's a lot of work. Um, you know, I, I'm behind my laptop here and and, and the yeah. camera on me. I'm looking at a whole whiteboard full of to do's. To do's and sticky notes and it's all it's all very it's rasta colors i mean it is red gold and green. <laughs> yeah, <kinda cool. laughs> i made sure to buy ones that were red gold and green um i would probably do twice a year okay i think that's i think that's legit i, I think spring and fall uh, type thing yeah, like before summer tour and right after yeah before fall tour so it's those sweet spots um and like I said, I'd like to do this first one in Marina Del Rey and maybe two more in Marina Del Rey next year. So uh, March and then September again. And then take it down to San Diego. Bring some of that that reggae at sea love down to San Diego for yeah. a 1,200-person cruise, um, which would be a huge commitment. But I'm, 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 in, I'm, I'm for it. Like, I think it's going to work out. We did the, I, I told you, we, I did a rockabilly cruise out of Long Beach. And we went down to Ensenada, and Fun. yeah, it was awesome. Who was on that? Who was on that bill? Uh, low straight jackets. Awesome. Um, Big Sandy. Yeah, I, yeah. I had Big Sandy on the show after after uh, around the cruise. Oh, cool. Mondo, oh, no. Dur Mondo Durami, uh okay. who's now playing with Jennifer Keith, his mm -hmm. girlfriend, and uh, but he was part of uh, Royal Crown Review. He's one of the founding members of RCR. Oh, and then just uh okay it's been five years whole bunch of different small yeah bands. yeah there was probably about i want to say eight or nine different different bands wow that's awesome yeah, yeah. i uh, i was a rockabilly girl for for a long time i was a pinup model that's where daisy divine came. so my my company name is daisy divine productions i'm doing business as reggae at sea um but yeah, it was all it was all the rockabilly, big sandy, uh, Reverend Horton Heat. When I started um, yeah. performing, it was Throw Rag and Reverend Horton Heat were my my two big acts that I came out with. Um, so that that's also a genre that I'm I'm very in love with. Um, that punk rock, you know, it, it's just all to me. It I mean it all kind of intertwined. Like everything comes from that, you know, all the music comes from from everything you know it's, yeah, it's yeah. You know. i I, see, I feel the same way it's like I, I, i'll go to a, i'd go to a jazz festival i'd go to a reggae concert i uh mm -hmm. ex ambassadors i saw um, you know i went to the the ub40 uh with yes. the original whalers and maxi and big mountain um so i i i don't know just go to as much as you can i mean if you're a music for it now i will tell you i have met one person in my life who cared less about music never had music on couldn't tell you a favorite band and i do not relate to those i don't understand because to me i legit wake up in the morning i walk down the hall to my home office here yeah. and the first thing i do is i play music I, I mean i just so yeah you have to you have to just know that like for for many of us that is it is just part of our lives it's who yeah, we are yeah exactly well i think i think more people or like us than than the person that doesn't like music. I'm not, right? I've never, I never experienced that in my life. It was such a trip. That's weird. I'm trying to think of that. I'm trying to think if I've ever met anybody like that. Could you even imagine not having a single day? No. 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 I can answer that real quick. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> no. I, I was in Sprouts, our local grocery store, and Maxie Priest came on the, the, the speaker. And I'm like, I remember that when it first came out, there was a cassette. Play. I had a cassette back then. And I, I just, yeah. so that's when I came home. I'm like, what's Maxi up to? And then I'd literally reach out to him on Instagram and, and he decided to be on my show. That's so cool. Yeah. But it's just, that's, that's, but that's how, honor. you know, hearing a part of a song at a grocery store can spark Small a memory. Part. Like 
you a small part of a song can just take you someplace that you've been before that you a place that you're like i said before a feeling an emotion a person a you know person. a relationship or whatever yeah yes whatever it is and um it, it's it's cathartic in a lot of ways and man if i like i can't imagine so my life today without music and and traveling for music and music festivals yeah. and like literally every weekend I'm seeing like tomorrow I'm going to go see protege, another reggae artist yeah. um, at the garden amp here locally. We have, we are, we, I will say that we are very blessed in Southern California. Very fortunate. Music. We are, yeah. we are very, very blessed with all the music opportunities that we have. Um, but to go to a local show and see protege and, you know, other bands playing, just on a whim if we wanted to go tomorrow you know to, to actually tonight there are some opportunities there's some some you know sublime cover bands playing in venice and it's just everywhere yeah um, i just can't imagine what my life would look like without all of that like i would just be working a nine-to-five job i would be looking towards retirement and that would be it but it what i use this nine-to-five job that i have aside from all the other things I'm doing is to really fund those experiences and experiences are where I'm at. I want experiences. And that's what I'm trying to bring to this cruise. So that people want to come and do it again, like something that they've never gotten to do. And it's so awesome. And they want to do it again. Well, that's, I, I tell you, and I've, I've told this to a couple of the music artists I've had on the show is, you know, and I, I literally just had this talk with the guy that's going to be next week's show is, they have the opportunity, just like now you do as a as a as a an event producer, uh, to create those memories for other people. And I, you know, like I told Maxie, we were talking about Bob, and uh, he's like, I remember I only saw Bob once. I was about midway up. I stood next to the uh, the engineers table, and I just just couldn't believe I was there. I go, you you realize like you're that now for uh, for young people. You're the Bob Marley. I mean, it's kind of is it weird, you know, and then that's what you're doing. You're going to be, people are going to go on your cruise and have memories because you created a cruise. That, that, that gives me chills when you put it in that perspective, because I, here I am saying, like, I want to cultivate a, an experience for people, but I'm not, th I'm, I am thinking of what they're going to feel when they're there, because I want to be that person that takes away from it, what I feel when I go to, to festivals. But yeah, you put it in perspective that, I mean, I, I have an opportunity to really bring something amazing to people's lives. You, they're always creating it. Yeah. Yeah, and that's and that that is truly why I'm doing it. I mean, I, I there there's a lot of work. It's a lot of stressful work. <laughs> um, so you know, it's really not for me. It really isn't. Right. Um, so I'm just you know I'm just excited to to see how it goes, and I, and I hope I hear all those stories of hey, I remember that cruise you did, that first, right. first one, your inaugural cruise. It was so epic, and 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 that's that's what I'm doing it for. Yeah, and, and and you won't even you well you might get some of that feedback, but it, it'll be in twenty years. Somebody's going right. to hear Long Beach Dub All Star on the on on the Sprouts Radio, and they go, "Oh, I remember when I saw them at the Marina Del Rey tour." Yeah. And it's just going to yeah. spark a memory. Yeah, it was a bitch, or that guy was cool, or you know. Or I, I met my best friend. Another, yeah. you know, I went solo to the the I show. Broke up with my friend. <laughs> it could be whatever. right. Yeah, I mean, I I came with uh, my husband, and and it was this one thing, and it was our anniversary yeah. or whatever. And I've heard, I've already heard those stories. Hey, that's our anniversary weekend. We're going, and it yeah. buy tickets. And so then, then, then it's on me to make sure that those people have the experience that I would want to have. Right. You know, and and it's gonna be that. I mean. I've been on the ship and you've been on it um, yeah. or the yacht, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just, okay, let's say we didn't have any reggae music and it was just a hangout party. Well, that's what it is day. most of the time. Right? But no music, no live music. It would be the most epic experience ever because that's how I felt on the, the party cruise. There was, they had a DJ playing and that was it. It was good food, drinks. And the outdoor, you know, the the upper deck where it's outdoor. And now you're adding in the live music aspect and the great, you know, cocktails and the taco bar and the 360 photo booth. And you're doing all the fun things and creating those memories. I wonder if, if this is a negative or on the on the big cruise. It was a little 
it was kind of weird that the guys from Little Straight Jackets are walking down the aisleway with me, or they're, I'm having breakfast with them, you know. And and this cruise, and they at least on the bigger cruise, I know they have rooms that they can set aside for artists and, and it and all that. But because I've had a, a couple other bands that are that do the big cruises out of out of Mexico, and uh, I'm like, is it weird? And like, well, they do set up rooms, but it's as part of the fun for them. It is part of the fun. And on this ship, I don't know that there's any place for them to to there, there is a green room. I, I I am lucky enough to have an area that is is strictly for bands only. Yeah. Um it's you know uh, a sectioned off area. It's kind of up in its private area. So I will have a green room for for them. I have to. Um they need to have that space. Um but to your point, and this is and this is the other thing, because I've also been on a music cruise. I did a train cruise about five years ago in 2018 that went from New Orleans down to Cozumel and back. Wow. There's a lot of reggae artists, Michael, Franti, and Spearhead, and those are all my friends and all of that. So that was cool. But yeah, you're literally hanging out with all of your favorite bands. Yeah. You know, you're chilling. You're you're having breakfast. Same with the hard the Hard Rock uh, Resort in Cancun. You're hanging out with all of your favorite bands. They're all there. You're all stuck there together. So you're gonna hang out and have have a blast. I think that same vibe is gonna be on this cruise because yeah. where are they gonna go? I mean, they could stay in the green room, but chances are they're no, gonna be out the time. Yeah. And yeah. That, so, that's the thing about reggae is everyone's pretty cool. Like you don't get a lot. Of cool. can, I'm trying to think of. I'm sure there are some prima donnas, but not many. I mean, especially- I mean, artists are artists are artists, right? Yeah. I'm sure there are some. Um, I can tell you honestly that the the bands that I've come to love and and have come to know and and be around, um, there's a lot of like just really humble, yeah. amazing person in the reggae scene, and and there are prima donna. I'm sure there are plenty, and I and I just haven't come across them in that that way yet but i'm sure as a promoter producer i'm going to run into some of that um at some point but you know i've never been at a reggae concert where i've seen you know anything crazy happen there's no yeah. there's no fighting. people are happy i mean you know it's, it's that whole vibe so yeah i i um i love it and i i mean different from like punk rock when i used to go to punk shows <laughs> that would be completely down being thrown <laughs> bottles being yeah. tossed the heads of tsol jack grisham and all, i mean just all of that so i've, I've witnessed all of it i uh, took my daughter when she was in high school to social distortion out in riverside at, at municipal we left before it got it before it ended i'm like yeah because i wasn't enjoying I it because i was just that the, the the circle got so big yeah like we were standing in the back area and i'm like okay and then now i'm protecting my daughter you know and because things were happening <laughs> it was like you're okay. literally dodging trash cans I, I i would have hated to have been the uh i don't that'd be a different kind of uh event producer oh absolutely like yeah a, a punk rock uh cruise no, i'm good <laughs> like i'm not i'm not gonna sign up for that because then also now you're you're liable for the damages to the boat and, and people getting thrown off it? the ship and yeah, right? people diving off, off the third deck yeah, yeah, I I don't want to be responsible for that either. No, I don't want to. I don't want to deal with that. But yeah, yeah. um, but yeah, the 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 reggae community has been, you know, pretty yeah. amazing. And I see how people have come together. And I've traveled solo. Like the first time I went to the Cancun festival, um, I went by myself. I had I was newly divorced. I was like, hey, I'm gonna start traveling. And I went, and I've made some of the best friends of my life ever at a reggae concert. You know, it's it's a big deal. Yeah, and uh, it's a good group. I, I the rockabilly was kind of the same way, right? Because it wasn't the, it wasn't psychobilly stuff. It was you know, swing music and Big Sandy and yeah. So what what is the actual date of the Reggae at Sea event? And it's September thirtieth. So we're about thirty five days, thirty six to thirty five days out from yeah. it. Um, and so all of the tickets that are available, like I said, I sold out of VIP, uh, last week, which is awesome. Uh, we still have GA available, um, uh, on Eventbrite. Um, you can go to reggae at C on, uh, Instagram or on Facebook. We have an event out there, um, to follow all the, the happenings. Um, 
there have been a couple of ticket giveaways that we've done. So I really encourage people to go out um, and see whenever I post that, hey, I'm going to be at X event, come out and see me. It's because I have a booth and there might be a special promo code that you can get to come oh, on the cruise. Nice. booth. Um, so like this Sunday, I'll be out at Sea Lakes down in um, Huntington Beach at Bolsa Chica Beach. They have a uh, outdoor music venue and it's always reggae Sunday. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so I go out to that and I set up, um, come say hi to me. Like, I would love to meet people and, and tell you what we're doing. And Well, this won't air before that. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so but don't yeah, show up in Huntington like, Beach looking for Krista. I know. In October. Right. <laughs> well, it's gonna air before i know but yeah it won't be this weekend but every but every sunday is, is yeah basically. so go to reggae at sea on, on instagram and yeah and see where All you're gonna be know where we're at. Yeah. yep for sure that most of chica place is nice so it's kind of cool awesome. yeah I, I uh i went you know a couple of times now I, I did last saturday they did a the burritos band is a sublime cover band and they were playing last Saturday. So that was cool. Um, and then every Sunday, you know, for their whole summer season, they have. They yeah. Have it. So, and they have, they have country. They have. They, they do. Have, yeah. Right, random stuff. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Yep. So. Sometimes they do big, big concerts on the beach, like right there. So. Yeah. Kind of neat. That'll be, that'll be you someday. Yeah. Well, it's funny because the owner, um, Alicia of Sea Lake, she, I was there Saturday for burritos band last weekend. She was there. She walked up. She's been very kind and, and told me to set up whenever I want to, um, just that she supports me and we have a lot of respect as two female, you know, owners yeah. of businesses. And, um, and she looked at me and she goes, I don't know. I mean, we could do sea legs at sea. And I was like, Oh, I don't know. <laughs> so I was thinking more like, yeah, reggae at sea legs or something. I will figure it out. But I mean, how how awesome to like partner with other women and kind of yeah. do something. You know? Well, and then but then I guess that would be a whole different because now mm -hmm. you got the marketing helping out too. Yeah, it would be it would be a whole different scenario, but yeah. it'd be kind of cool to partner. And then you could head out of Long Beach. So that's the thing. So you know, I have an opportunity to to do some of their smaller boats. Yeah, uh, and it's funny because every time I mention, "Hey, we're doing reggae at sea. It's this yacht. It's you know reggae," and and a lot of times I hear, "Hey, is it that is it that booth cruise out of Long Beach that used to go out every Sunday?" And I'm like, "No, <laughs> I mean it's a small little boat and it's cool, and I used to go on it sometimes." Yeah. And the difference between the boats that they have, you know, in Long Beach and the one that we're doing in Marina Del Rey, yeah. huge difference, but. I do have an opportunity to bring one of the bigger boats into the marina at, at Long Beach. And I'm really considering, you know, Cali Vibes is a big reggae festival every March, sometimes February, um, here in Long Beach, where I live, um, to do a reggae at sea kind of pre-party situation. And that's what I'm thinking about doing. Wow. How fun would that be? Like yeah. right before the big festival, have a big reggae at sea event also in conjunction with that. yeah i'm a business guy so now i'm thinking <laughs> yeah would you be splitting dollars up because people are going to go why well, i'm not going to do the sea the, the event at sea because i'm spending my money at cali vibes right. you know because if you only have so much money earmarked for 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 music yeah well i mean so that's the thing so i think it's you know how do i want to pursue that yeah. march, will come, march will come very quickly you know if i am if, if i'm thinking about doing something in march i need to be yeah. Right after this one ends, I'm on the, you know, I'm doing the next thing. Yep. Well, that's, a, that's why I was in Dallas uh, yesterday. <laughs> I got back yesterday. Yeah. But um, because I'm, 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 I just got the summer of 2024 line that I have to go out and start selling. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's like people are like, cool. summer 2024, we, we're still in summer 23. <laughs> you have to go. Like it's go time. I feel like it's go time now. You're going to be in the same boat. So yeah, and you, and you're just constantly chasing those dates, but you have to. You have to be on it, thinking. What is your yeah. like? You asked me what my lineup would be. Now, if I could afford the lineup, I said I would be on it. It's not going to be probably that lineup, but yeah, it's going to be another fabulous lineup. I, I promise. You know, and it's it's just getting getting through this first one, going. Okay, I learned all these lessons. Here's yeah. what I know. 
Now I can rinse and repeat, and now I know how to do better. And it's just going to keep growing. And and so it's a learning curve, but it's an exciting one. Going to be a fun one. Yeah. I'm excited. I That's Yeah. I, I'll have to see. I, I, September, I should be just about done with my line by then. September, yeah. I'm going to be on the road a lot. I'll be, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Because I, I have to get all my stuff in by October 1st. Okay, so that's right after that. Yeah, that's what I said. So I might be right at the end. So I might I might be able to get over there. That'd be good. Yeah. That'd be cool. Well, yeah. hey, thank you so much. So it's Reggae at Sea on Instagram. Yep. And pretty much everywhere else, right? Yeah, Reggae at Sea. You can find us on Facebook. We have an event out there. So it's just Reggae at Sea. Um, and then Reggae at Sea on Instagram. And we're, um, you can go to reggae at com and find all of our information there. Tickets are on sale there. Um, again, we're we're sold out of VIP, but I, I promise you the GA is just as epic. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we are so excited to see everybody out there. It's going to be fun. Well, thanks yeah. for the time. I can't wait. I'm, I'm super excited, yeah. super proud to see you doing yeah. this. I appreciate you. And I can appreciate the uh, the amount of work that's going into it. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy, but it's, it's worth it. Yeah, exactly. Well, good luck. Uh, and I'm sure we'll take touch. All right. All Chris, right. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.